Welcome back to the Glow Up Girl podcast. I'm Kyra. I'm so pleased to welcome Kay into the Glow Up Girl podcast. Welcome. Oh my goodness. I've been looking forward to this. This is going to be so exciting. Yes, yes. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Why don't you tell the audience out there who you are and what you do? Okay, so my name is Kay Sutha. I'm based in the UK and basically in a nutshell, I help coaches, businesses, um, business owners, authors, consultants to go from invisible to visible by helping them get in on podcasts and creating their own. Awesome. Well, yeah, she's somebody that a lot of my listeners need to know. So exciting, exciting. So let's go, let's dive into, let's start with your journey. Okay. Um, when did you realize you want to start a business and what were you doing before you became an entrepreneur? Oh my God, Cairo, where should I start? Holy <laughs> crap. I mean, <laughs> so, all right. In my twenties, um, I went from job to job, to job, to job, right? I had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up. When people asked me, I mm-hmm. turned around and said to them, I want to be rich. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But I had no idea how I was going to get there, what's going to happen, when it was going to happen, mm-hmm. and I had no idea what I wanted to be. And so I went from job to job to job to job, trying to figure out what do I want to be. And so every single one of them was completely different to the other. So I worked in magistrates court, right? Um, mm. Found out that wasn't for me. I became a hairdresser. That wasn't for me. I became, uh, I, I was an interpreter for um, deaf kids um, and did sign language. That wasn't for me. I then became an MMA fighter. That wasn't for <laughs> me. I ended up in hospital, right? I then became a police officer, ended up in hospital again. And I'm like, every time I thought I'm moving that step forward, something happened and just destroyed it and I have to start all over again. Mm. And so I got to a point where I kept, ended up, going to hospital right mm-hmm. for one thing after another as an MMA fighter right I was so excited because I love fighting right I like beating the crap out of people it's so much fun right <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I got my first chance and my coach finally said to me he goes you're ready for your first tournament your first official fight I'm like, no way. And he goes, yeah, and guess what? It's going to be in Thailand. I was so excited, right, that I was like, right, I'm training even harder. Mm-hmm. And so during training, or I guess it wasn't just the last training that I went to, but it was leading up to it, I ended up in hospital because I couldn't move my neck. Mm. But I don't know what happened, but when I got to the hospital, the doctors basically told me that if I continue fighting, and the state that my spine was in, that I'll end up paralyzed. Wow. And so at that point, I was like, I got scared. I don't want that to happen to me. Mm-hmm. And so I just quit it altogether. Mm-hmm. And so I got, I went back to square one again. All right, what do I do next? And it just happened to be that I fell into um, becoming a police officer in London, right? Mm-hmm. This, this was not my dream. When I applied, I applied as a complete joke, not even thinking they would approve me. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> and the next minute, I'm getting suited and booted for a uniform. I was like, well, I guess this is what I'm doing. But let's see what happens here. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was a police officer for six and a half years. Mm-hmm. The last year and a half, I actually progressed to detective. Now. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And so... I didn't know how much of a toll and pressure it was putting on my body, right? Mm -hmm. Mentally, physically, emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, I went to sleep one night perfectly fine, right? It was all good. Woke up the next morning, jumped into the shower, and as soon as the hot water touched my skin, it just started burning. And so I jumped out, ran to the mirror, and seeing my entire body had come out in a rash overnight. Oh, wow. No idea where it came from. I called up my friend whose mum is a nurse and told her what happened. And she goes to me, get to the hospital right now. I'm like, wow, well, what's going on? She goes, get to the hospital right now. So I'm like, okay, went to the hospital, had all these tests done. And I remember waiting in the consultation room for the doctor to come in to give me my results. I was like, well, tell mm-hmm. me what's going on. And I remember him opening the door, taking one step in, looking straight at me. And he goes, you were lucky to get here when you did. 
And I'm like, what are you talking about? What's going on here? He goes, if you didn't get here when you did, your throat would have closed up. Oh, my gosh. And at that point, I was like, holy crap, what if my throat closed up while I was asleep? I would never Mm -hmm. woke up the next morning. Mm -hmm. So I said to him, how did this happen? What's going on? And he goes, this particular type of rash is brought on when the body is overly stressed. Oh, wow. And so they do say that, you know, um, stress is a silent killer. Mm -hmm. And so I guess it was just a progress and it just got worse and worse and worse. And so at that point, I was like, well, I can't continue to do this job because now my life is on the line. Right. Which is so ironic because that's when my life will be on the line when I'm in the line of duty, not when I'm asleep in bed. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) And so I decided to quit that job. Yes. So again, I was like, okay, six and a half years in the police force. What the hell am I going to do now? And so I decided, you know what, I'll figure it out. I've got enough money to last me for six months. Let me just figure it out. Mm-hmm. And um, on my last day, my friend um, called me. She goes to me, okay, um, we're holding an event in central London. So she was like an events planner. Mm-hmm. She was like, come down, mingle, network. I'm like, do you know what? I really can't be bothered. I just quit my job. I just want to go home. I don't want to talk to anybody. She was like, no, 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 come down. If you don't like it, then go home. Mm-hmm. So she convinced me and I went down there and you know what I got there and there was a load of people there suited and booted accountants right they were bankers and I'm like this really isn't my scene so I did what <laughs> normal people do right when they go to an event I walk straight to the bar and order a drink mm-hmm. right and so as I was waiting for my drink um to, to be done and brought over to me this guy came over to the bar and started talking to me and and I'm just thinking, oh, here we go again, another chat up line, right? And so, <laughs> <laughs> right, as you do. Yeah. And then um, he started asking me these questions. And, you know, like, what are my skills? Or, you know, what is my employment history? What qualifications do I have? And I'm like, this is a really weird chat up line. Who are you? Mm-hmm. and um he goes to me the thing I was answering all these questions and in the end it dawned on me like oh my god I'm, I'm giving him all this information but I don't even know who he is and so right. he goes to me, I'm a member of parliament and I would love for you to join my team right part of the London elections mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I was like what he was like yeah he goes you'd be great to be my campaign manager I want you to join my team <laughs> and, and I'm like um okay I guess, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm not doing anything else. Right. And so I met him on Friday and by Tuesday I was in the books and working in politics, right? <laughs> and what I learned very quickly, right, is that this, Kyra, there's more criminals in politics than there are in the prison system, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. I was like, well, if I didn't survive being a police officer and I ended up in the hospital, there's no way I'm going to be happy in politics. Exactly. And so, <laughs> and so I decided that this wasn't for me, right? Again, mm-hmm. so I walked away after I think a couple of months. I was like, no. And then again, back to square one. What the hell what do if, I what do? What are we going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> and so then um, at that time, I had a personal trainer, right? Because I, I was mm-hmm. like, I don't have a job or anything. So I've got six months to figure this out. Let me work on myself, especially when I came up with rashes and all this stuff going on with mm-hmm. me get a personal trainer and we work on me and I was telling my personal trainer this and I was like I have no idea what what I'm going to be doing this is what's been going on and she goes okay she goes have you ever been to a seminar I'm like what do you mean like university and she goes no a seminar where you have an expert speaking on stage um and they teach and educate you on a particular topic I was like that sounds like university (laughs) right and I was like what are you talking about she goes well, there's a guy that's come down that I follow. And he's freaking awesome. He talks about mindset. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. And he goes, you should come down with me. He's coming down from the US to the UK. And I'm like, okay, what's his name? He goes, Dr. Martini. I'm like, who's he? Right? She goes, you don't know Dr. Martini. I was like, no. She goes, haven't you heard of The Secret? I'm like, what secret? <laughs> what secret? <laughs> right? And she goes, you have to go and read the book. Go and read the book. Mm-hmm. right so I'm not like, really she goes yeah go and read it and she goes he's coming down next week let's go together 
And I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything else. Might as well, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so I was, I was starting to read the book. I hadn't finished it by the time um, I went to see him. I was just getting started. And then I um, went in there and met my personal trainer there. And she goes, oh, I hope you don't mind. I brought a friend along. I was like, no, I'm more the merrier. Mm-hmm. And so there were three of us, and I was sitting there, and I was listening to the talk and the mindset. And honestly, in the beginning, I was like, this sounds a bit woo-woo to me. This is real, you know. <laughs> I've never heard of this concept. It's, it's, it's a bit hippie, right? And so, <laughs> and so I was a bit skeptical. And um, uh, her friend was talking to me, and she goes to me again. It started, it happened again, Kyra. She goes to me, okay, so what have you been doing? What are your skills? What are your dreams? What, what are you looking to get into? And I'm mm-hmm. like, this is so familiar. What's going on here? And <laughs> yeah. so I was like, I would love to get into events, but I don't have no qualifications in events. I have no experience. I've never done it. But I think it's a fun thing to do. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> and when I was telling people this, people were like, you're crazy. No one's going to hire you, right? No one in their right mind. And so this girl goes to me, do you know what? you'll be awesome working this company that I work in. I'm like, okay, why is that? She goes, well, they're just building out the events department and they're, they're looking for people just like you. Why don't you come down to the event that was being held next week and I can introduce you to the team? Mm. And I'm like, really? She goes, yeah. And she goes, it's an American company, but they're international and they're doing events all over the world. And mm. they want to, you know, um, kind of scale their events mm-hmm. department. I was like, okay, let's let's check it out. And honestly, she goes to me, you know, let me take your number and I'll call you and give you the venue, the dates, the times, and all of that. And I thought, I'm never going to hear from her, right? <laughs> you do things like this don't happen, <laughs> right? A few days later, she texts me with the venue, the time, the name of the hotel, all of this. I was like, oh my goodness, okay. So I was like, well, I guess I'm going to be going. Mm-hmm. Went there met the team the management team everyone they're all American apart from me and this other girl mm-hmm. and I learned that these events were business events right so you had ex-marketers right you mm-hmm. had uh, I've got um, I don't know, co- uh, coaches and all these great people that know about business mm-hmm. on stages talking teaching educating and so as I was talking to the team we find out what they do and who they are and they're from like all over the world I'm like this is crazy I've never I've never seen a business structure like this that where everybody's from all over the world mm-hmm. and I've gone on well with them so much I spoke to them for four hours straight right and we were mm-hmm. talking about British soaps of all things and <laughs> they were like oh my goodness they were like you know when can you start I'm like really and they're like yeah when can you start and I'm like, well, I, I guess I can start straight away. I'm not doing anything. They're all like, <laughs> fantastic, right? Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden, a couple of days later, they were like, we're going to sort it all out, do the paperwork, blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, fantastic. They call me and they were like, what are you doing in two days? Um, I'm nothing. Wow, what's going on? And they were like, oh, fantastic. They were like, we've got our event in Malaysia. We need you to be there in two days. <laughs> I'm like, what? I was like, yeah, they're like, all you have to do is pack your bags, right, and make sure you're at the airport. Flights, accommodation, everything is paid for by the company. And I'm like, what? I'm like, you do realize I've never done events before, right? They're like, are you willing to learn? Like, yeah, they're like, well, that's fine then. (laughs) And so all of a sudden, since 2015, up until the pandemic, I was traveling all all over the world, different Mm -hmm. cities, different countries at these events right learning and seeing Mm -hmm. these business owners and how they work right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so now I'm kind of thinking this whole becoming a business owner it's actually a thing (laughs) right (laughs) Right. yeah (laughs) not everybody actually goes out to work right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm like okay so I then became like the sponge and I'm just learning from different people and the team and the speakers and I started from the beginning, to be fair, right? Because I was mm-hmm. like, I don't know this niche. I don't know how this industry works. I had to start from the beginning and I had to make sure that I, my pride and my ego didn't get in the way because I was starting from scratch now, right? right. And I'm yeah. open to it because now yeah. it's kind of opened my eyes out to a different way of doing things, a different life, right? This was no longer a job. It was a lifestyle, 
Mm-hmm. Right? There's a difference. And yeah. so I was doing like the admin stuff, punching in numbers in the back. Mm-hmm. And then someone came up to me and they go, why don't you do sales? I'm like, what do you mean sales? Like, who wants to become a salesperson? Everyone hates salespeople. And they come knocking on my door. I don't open the door. <laughs> I don't want to be that person. They're like, no, okay. It's different. <laughs> That's what explain this to me. Mm-hmm. And so I then started learning front end sale, right? So just mm-hmm. doing like small packages, like $50, $100, 497 all this kind of stuff, and then got better and better and better at it to mm-hmm. the point where I'm now closing $150,000 packages and become the number one salesperson in the company. And so at that point, I was like, this is freaking fantastic. <laughs> this right. is awesome. It couldn't get any better than this. And then the CEO called me up and he goes to me, okay, we are opening up a resort in Costa Rica. You were like, wait, it is going to get better. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> exactly right because we're opening up this resort where we're going to be holding our masterminds where our top clients are going to be going down and learning even more and i'm like okay he goes i want you to be part of the team over there and i'm like what in costa rica and he was like yeah he goes all you have to do is pack your bags flights everything is going to be dealt with you just got to get there and i'm like <coughs> sorry excuse me and i'm like Okay, well, how long do you want me to be there for? He goes, however long you want to be there for. If, if you don't like it, then you can come right back. And I'm like, um, okay, I guess I'm flying to Costa Rica then and moving over there. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and so I was there. It was freaking awesome, right? It wasn't work at all, Kyra. So mm-hmm. we were there, these events, mastermind, meeting all these people, networking. Oh, my God, I was zip lining. I was kayaking with these clients. <laughs> we were having a party. We, Oh, my God, we had, like, you know, dancers there, fire, uh, what do you call them, fire spitters? Or, uh, mm-hmm. Oh, my God, it was a ball. Mm-hmm. And I was like, life is perfect. It can't get any better. <laughs> and I guess at that point I jinxed myself right because mm-hmm. all of a sudden when everything was all good and I was on top of my game making so much money the company shut down mm. just like that so now because the company paying for my accommodation at my own apartment Right, paying for my food and my drink, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, paying me to be there for my services. All of a sudden, I was evicted, didn't have no place to stay, didn't have no food and water, right? I'm in mm-hmm. a foreign country and I don't even speak the language. Right. Um, what the hell am I going to do now? And I remember sitting there and I just started laughing. I was laughing to myself, Kyra, because I was like, this is such a ridiculous situation to be in. How did this happen? And as I was sitting there, I was looking at my co-workers and they're looking at me, they're like, why are you laughing? Do you realize what's just happened? I'm like, yeah, that's exactly why I'm laughing. I was like, do you not get it? I go, when you think about the great people of the world, Tony Robbins, Les Brown, I go, they were all homeless at one point and now they're multimillionaires. That means I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> All right, girl. Right? <laughs> right? And so at that point, because I wasn't in the negative emotion of, holy crap, what am I going to do? Pulling at my hair, crying, and, you know, all this emotions that my coworkers were feeling, I realized that I was able to have a different perspective, think outside the box, and find a solution. Mm-hmm. And the solution was that I had been around these events and around all these great people and learned so much about business. And so while the business shut down, the resort was actually set up as a separate entity and the resort was still going, but it was being fed by the business that no longer existed. Mm-hmm. Now they don't have no money, but they have a resort and bills and still staff to pay. Mm-hmm. So I decided that I went over to the resort manager and I said, I can help you bring clients in to help you keep running this resort, paying your staff, paying your bills. But as a trade, I, you've, got, you've got all these rooms now that are available. I need a roof over my head. I need food and drink in my stomach. And I will help you bring clients in. Mm-hmm. You know. And so once I started doing that and I showed them how to do it, what needs to be done, and mm-hmm. help bring clients, I was like, hmm. 
this is interesting. How about if I go to all the other hotels and the restaurants that are on the coast and do the same thing? Mm-hmm. And so I started doing that and then realized, oh my goodness, I actually know a lot more than I actually realized about yeah. business and this actually works. And so this is how I started to raise money and made sure I had at least you know, the basic survival stuff that I needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and then eventually, after a couple of months, I was able to then raise enough money to get a flight back home to the UK. Mm-hmm. So that was my kind of like aha moment, like, oh, my goodness, I can actually do this. I've actually proven it to myself and yeah. other people that I can do this. Yes. And so that's when it all began. And I was like, hmm. I need to think of a name. What should I call it? And then Uncensored Society was the name that I came up with because mm-hmm. why a lot of the speakers, gurus, coaches around me, they were exactly that. They were raw, real, and relentless in achieving their dreams. They didn't take any BS, right? Mm-hmm. No excuses. If you've got a dream, you've got a goal, then just make it happen. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I wanted to create um, a program a community of people where we coach them doing exactly that and we don't take any excuses or BS. And if you want things to happen, then we can show you the road and the coaching and everything that you need in order for that to happen. But it all starts with mindset. Yes. Oh my gosh. Such an inspiring story. Thank you. And, and and I think the the one thing, something that really stood out to me is that it was you every time. It was your ability to connect to people that led to these opportunities because like it's like the common denominator every time you got asked to go somewhere and then you be somewhere and then somebody starts talking to you and then next thing you know you've got a job yeah and it was just your will and that you know and then when you got to a place of adversity with like I don't have a place I don't have a job anymore You know, you didn't just um, sit there and wallow in self-pity. You went out and you thought of, like you said, you problem solved and figured out a way to create income for yourself in order. Yeah. Yeah. That that's pretty awesome. Awesome. So it has been quite a journey, but at the mm-hmm. end of the day, I've learned things happen for a reason, right? Mm-hmm. And things don't happen to you, they happen for you. And so all these different paths that I was taking, it was a universe basically telling me, no, this isn't the right path for you. Mm-hmm. Move on, move yeah. on. They kept moving me on until I got there. Yeah, yeah. I That is definitely something I think uh, those of you listening and watching can can just learn from. I mean, I think sometimes you need someone to be put in front of you to remind us that things do happen for a reason. And your journey is your journey and it will work the way it's written and it's going to work the way it's supposed to. And, you know, it just, you have to just be, you have to have an open mind and be open to it. And like, I mean, for you and the number of things that you tried, <laughs> I love, first of all, I just love that because I don't think enough people, when you say you're following your dreams, I mean, that means you have to be open to trying different things. Like you said, you didn't think you would be a police officer or a detective <laughs> or a Do fighter. You- yeah. Do you know what the funny thing is about, about that all? And, and you can't see on a digital platform is that I'm only actually four foot 11. <laughs> right and so many people are like no way the police force are not going to hire you it's not going to ah. be too small like there's got to be a height restriction and clearly there wasn't but do you know what was funny I actually while I was studying I actually applied for jobs part-time jobs at supermarkets right uh-huh. and every single supermarket rejected my application because I was too short oh but wow they told, me, <laughs> they told me that they could not offer me the job because of health and safety issue and you have to be a certain height behind a counter and Mm -hmm. stack the shelves. And I'm like, yeah, the the police force accepted me. That's insane. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but here we go. Exactly. So, okay. So Uncensored Society was born. And uh, tell us about some of the services that you offer. Oh my goodness. So, the main thing that we offer is business coaching, right? And we focus on five main pillars of business, which is sales, marketing, finance, operations, and leadership. Of course, there's a loads of element when it comes to mindset and also career and life balance as well. 
Mm-hmm. But it's we we focus on people that not only are startups but also got to uh, a particular point in their business and they can't see how else they can scale, right? Mm-hmm. So we look at different levels of um, businesses and see really get to the root of what's going on in the business to see what we can put in place, what processes, what um, strategies in order to then level up. Mm-hmm. Um, and along with that. And this is one of my favorites, right? This is something I started this year. And this came out of nowhere again. Like, it's, part, it's my life story, right? Things just seem to just happen. <laughs> and so when the pandemic happened um, mm-hmm. and we're no longer doing live events, um, I was like, okay, so the world doesn't just stop just because of the pandemic. We've got to figure out how else to get out there mm-hmm. in the world and still promote. You have to promote, promote, promote your business. That never, ever mm-hmm. stops. There's still bills you have to pay. There's staff that you have to pay. Mm-hmm. And so I decided I'm going to use podcasts. Mm-hmm. Right? Let's get out there on podcasts. And to be honest, when I first got out there on podcasts, I was getting so many rejections, Kyra. Nobody would even respond back to my emails. That's even the worst. Mm-hmm. That's the worst when it was just like tumbleweed right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I'm like what is going on here what's happening like other people are doing it why can't I get on and so I kind of strategized um I changed Mm -hmm. my tactics all of a sudden I got myself booked on 100 podcasts in 60 days awesome congratulations thank you not only that I was then being asked to speak at virtual summits being asked to have my program in people's membership um uh, portal be put on newsletters like it just went on and on and on and on and on mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden people are asking me how are you doing this mm-hmm. I'm like oh damn I've got to create a course now <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> right and so and that's when I created make your mark podcast agency um and so this is all about podcasts it's powered by uncensored society it's all under one umbrella Mm-hmm. And so I've created a program to actually help people the right way get on podcasts and also get referred, get on PR, get on radio, get on TV, do all these other different things that come off of just doing one podcast, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's insane. And then guess what, Kyra? People were then asking me, so what's your podcast called? I was like, um, I don't have one. I was like no I don't have one and then the next person asked me the next person asked me the next person asked me and I was like okay I guess I gotta create my own podcast now Mm -hmm. (laughs) and then I created the uncensored society podcast Mm -hmm. and it's using the same formula and we talk about the five main pillars of business sales marketing finance operations and leadership with mindset um, and career life balance But what I decided to do is because I come from the events industry, Mm -hmm. I decided to use that same formula where you have a speaker on stage to do their presentation, they talk about the products, the services, and at the end, everyone's running to the back of the room and buying their product. Well, Mm -hmm. that wouldn't be fun to bring that same formula to a podcast. Mm -hmm. And so where a lot of podcasters out there are saying, oh, no, no selling, no pitching, we're just going to have a conversation, I'm like, screw that I'm all about it let's bring mm-hmm. leads to people's business exactly right? I mean that's why they're there <laughs> right that's why you have them on after all is that to promote their business yes yeah. and so I've structured it in such a way where we are having a conversation but I'm letting people know about their businesses what they do testimonials mm-hmm. and then always having a call to action one of the mm-hmm. things that I realized that people don't do at the end of a podcast is have a call to action. Well, mm-hmm. if you don't have a call to action, how are they going to connect with you? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And so I created a podcast. Got Oh, my goodness. So even currently right now, I've got 56 people on the waiting list, right? Because mm-hmm. application based only. Mm-hmm. Actually, you're going to do it application based. That's the only way you're going to get quality people on your podcast. Mm-hmm. For your list, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I started creating my own podcast and creating a structure. And one of the things that people have said to me, they're like, your podcast is so structured, it's so organized. Like, how are you doing this? And so I was like, huh, now people are asking me how I'm doing this. I created my own podcast ag- um, editing agency mm-hmm. where we now help people launch their own podcast. We do the editing, we do the distribution, we create the front covers. We do 
all the stuff that people don't want to do. Right? Yeah. <laughs> take the headache away from people. Mm-hmm. So all they, so all they need to do is focus on creating content. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So now I've now got my podcast editing agency and have a load of people then signing up, doing creating podcasts because they know in order to build authority to go from invisible to visible, they need to be out there. And mm-hmm. why not use podcasts? And when you have your own podcast, as you know, it builds authority. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So they're the different aspects I've been working on, and it's just kind of happened out of the blue. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. people say things don't happen by accident and I was like well I didn't plan any of this <laughs> <laughs> but it it, it 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 may happen you know you didn't plan it but you certainly have been preparing for this moment like right. you're you've been preparing and all the other work and everything that you've done so definitely think that I, I admire your story your journey your determination and I think that that's so important that People just, you know, you got to keep going. You got to keep pushing always. And one thing that I definitely align to you on is like, you're not afraid to try things, you know? And like, I'm always like, I throw something at the wall and I'll see if it sticks. If it doesn't, (laughs) I mean, if it doesn't, I can change it or I can do something different or whatever, but I'm not going to just have like analysis paralysis because I'm trying to overthink I think things happen in the moment and you have to be willing to catch that moment Yes, and run with it um, and not just sit there and say, okay, well, I can't release a course until it is perfect, until it's a perfect course. No, like somebody, (laughs) somebody else will have already done it. So just, just when you get the idea, like do it. Just do it. Right. And the thing is, you don't have to have everything planned. I didn't have anything planned. It just kind of (laughs) fell into my lap. And I guess I just went with it, right? Mm -hmm. But then you've got to be that person that does take risks. That's okay to just do something, see what happens. If it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, then that's just another skill to add to to your profile, right? You've done this. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Taking that risk, you don't need to have it all planned out. Just freaking do it and see what happens. I couldn't have said it better myself. So talk to me about, because you are busy. So how do you manage um, your time in finding balance? Oh my goodness. So this was a struggle in the beginning. I can't lie, right? Mm -hmm. It was a struggle. But the number one thing that I do, right? And I do this every single day now. Mm-hmm. everything goes in my calendar I can't I can't stress how important it is mm-hmm. to make sure you have every task that you need to do to complete in your calendar and I'm so anal about it like I even have times blocked out in my calendar when I'm going to have breakfast lunch and dinner because mm-hmm. as you know when you get busy in, mm-hmm. in business right you start neglecting yourself right yeah. and all of a sudden a whole day's gone past and you're like oh I haven't eaten anything Mm -hmm. right you need to be taking care of yourself and making sure that these tasks get done and also learning to prioritize and organize and asking for help that's one thing I find that people struggle with if you don't know something stop getting in your own head stop with the overwhelm reach out to someone in your network and be like okay I don't know how to create a landing page what do I do Mm -hmm. who do you know exactly and reach out and ask for help with people um you don't have the time to learn every single aspect of business right it's not possible not even in a lifetime Mm -hmm. and so reaching out getting help outsourcing building a team is the best way to then free up your time and actually knowing what tasks you need to be doing and what tasks can be delegated Mm -hmm. yes that is so very true. And it's definitely, like you said, it's definitely like steps in that journey to getting to that place where you're like, okay, yep, I don't have to do this. I can, I can get somebody else to do this. I can take my hand off of it. Right. Because <laughs> I think, you know, obviously as entrepreneurs, you know, it's your baby, it's your business. And so you want everything to be a certain way, but you're right. You have to bring in other people because you're, if you don't, it's just going to lead to burnout and you're not going to be your best. I mean, if you're stuck in all the admin duties all day, then you cannot plan the vision and you have to be able to get to a place to separating those things. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. So I think we just say that people need to be very clear 
um, with how they value themselves, Mm -hmm. right? And so doing admin duties isn't necessarily something that you as a business owner should be doing, Mm -hmm. right? Um, So being very clear as to what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, valuing yourself and setting those boundaries and having Mm non-negotiables, right? That is so important. What I mean by non-negotiables, so for one, my non-negotiable is I don't do any work on a Sundays. That's my time, mm-hmm. right? Sundays I don't work. Mondays to Saturdays I do bits, bits of pieces on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Monday to Friday is my main time where I'm full on in my business. But you got to make sure you set time aside and have those non-negotiables. But that then comes from knowing and being clear as to valuing yourself and understanding mm-hmm. what you need as well. Exactly. So true. So very true. <clears throat> excuse me so i uh, my my have one last question um here for you so we have heard your entrepreneur journey mm-hmm. um for anybody out there who might be listening um just interested in thinking maybe you know do i want to start my own business what are your thoughts on entrepreneurship and is it for everyone okay i've got a straight short answer for that no it's not for everyone <laughs> right right the for that is if it was for everyone, right, then I wouldn't be able to build a team for myself because mm-hmm. everyone's out there building a business, right? Mm-hmm. And the thing is, some you have to have really thick skin to start a business from scratch. It doesn't happen overnight, right? There's mm-hmm. going to be so many obstacles. you got to be able to keep going. That being in business is like this it's a freaking roller coaster right mm-hmm. full of emotions there's gonna be times where you just want to give up everything mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and then there's other people that just want an easy life just want to be able to make money to pay the bills and that's it right they're happy with that they're happy to work with somebody else because they don't want that headache and do you know what that's okay mm-hmm. that's perfectly fine if that's what you want right the people that have a bigger mission a bigger goal to make the world a better place right, is those people that need to keep on going. And if it wasn't for other people that didn't want to build a business or were happy with it, then you wouldn't be able to build a team. Mm-hmm. Right? Be thankful for those people as well because they're the ones that's doing all the work for you in your business and helping you build your business and scale it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like that. I like that. So true. Okay. So please tell everybody out there how they can find you, how they can connect to you and anything that you've got going on that you want the audience to know about right now. Okay. Awesome. So um, I've got a couple of websites. I've got uncensoredsociety.com. Go and have, have a look over there. This is where all the business stuff is. If we want to build your own podcast, and in fact, Kyra, I want to ask you before I, I, I mention anything here, is it okay if I give your guess your listeners a free gift yeah yeah yes. okay brilliant so <laughs> I now I know how important it is for business owners to get out there in front of people tell people mm-hmm. promote promote the businesses and the services and so I have a gift I've created um, a small guide to actually go by step by step on how to get booked on podcasts okay mm-hmm. so if you go on get booked on podcast.com You'll be able to find all the information and it takes you step by step on all the things that you should be thinking of prior to the interview, during your interview and after your interview. Yeah, that's right. So once you've done your interview, it's not mm-hmm. over. There's exactly. follow up that needs to be done. OK, yeah. um, so that's there for you guys. Get yourself out there on podcasts. Um, if you want more information, then go onto my website, makeyourmarkagency.com. Um, schedule a call with me. Reach out to me on Facebook, on Instagram. I'm K. Suthar, um, and I'll be able to help you and advise you as best I can. Awesome. Well, we will also put all these links in the show notes as well so that you all can get to them easy. And I was just writing them down as you were going through them, too. So thank you. Thank you. That was so awesome. Um, this was such a great conversation. We are um, we are going to move into our final segment now. This is where I get to quiz you just five more questions for you, Kay. Oh, okay. <laughs> we get to know you. We get to know you on one le- one level deeper. Ooh, um, so, all right. all right. Question one is: How do you start the day? Oh my goodness! So, have you heard of the book called Miracle Morning? I have yeah. not. 
oh my goodness it changed everything the way that I do things in the morning because the mm-hmm. way you set your morning is how the rest of your day will pass. that's out. true yeah, that is true so if you've got to read miracle morning and it tells you things like do journaling reflect mm-hmm. yeah, do, do some exercise in the morning like mm-hmm. take that time out in the morning just to have you time that's so important right think mm-hmm. about the things that you want to get done in the day meditate right go and drink some water right having water first thing in the morning is so important when people don't have breakfast or eat i'm like you guys are insane how do you not eat in the morning and miss a meal right <laughs> right yeah exactly time, like, go and drink some water go get something to eat and just have that time for yourself and i'll tell you something that makes so much of a difference on the way the rest mm-hmm. of your day your week your mm-hmm. month pan out you mm-hmm. get a lot more clarity Exactly. It's so funny. I mean, I always ask that question of entrepreneurs because I think that it is so important how you start the day. And so I get so many different answers and some of them like, what? Like, that's how you start today. And then, you know, there are people like, yes, I'm a person who like, I journal in the morning, I pray in the morning, like all those exercise. So all those things, but I know people do, you know, you have to do what works for you. Right. Um, so question two, how do you spend a day off? So what do you do on Sundays? Oh my God. So, right. So my Sundays are my time where I do my facials. I have to put my face, like tone, cleanse, mask, hair mask. Oh my goodness. So it's all about me, right? (laughs) Sundays and do my nails and, you know, my feet, all this stuff that being pampered right Mm -hmm. I love going to spas I like afternoon teas being in a bathrobe but of course during the pandemic couldn't do any of them so Mm -hmm. I learned to do that all at home right Mm -hmm. have a Mm -hmm. spa at home it's like no I'm not doing anything apart from treat myself on Sundays and I love my Sundays for it it's funny because Sundays is the only day that I actually have off but I get up the earliest because I know it's it's a treat (laughs) for me today (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> exactly yes yes I love that um what's uh one song what's a song in your current playlist that you're loving or that gets you pumped up <coughs> um oh my goodness I listen to so many different songs I'm just looking at my Spotify right now <laughs> I'm on there I know it's always a hard it's not an easy answer because I'm always like I have so many things that I like so. Oh my god! Okay, so do you want to hear what I was listening to last? The last All right. Thing? Yeah. Okay. Can you hear it? Uh huh. <laughs> Can you so everybody loves somebody. Okay. That's cool. Nice. Right? And yeah. so that gets you pumped up for uh-huh. sure. I mean, it's yeah. the oldie. But mm-hmm. it, it just gets you moving. Hey, you know, whatever gets you going, you know, sometimes it's sometimes it's old, sometimes it's current, like whatever. I like a I like a good mix of things. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> um, what's a one goal that you've set for yourself um this year? <sighs> one just one. <laughs> I mean, you know, just one of your one of your many, right? business or or personal whatever you feel comfortable with sharing okay I guess my my number one goal that I'm working on especially for next year mm-hmm. <laughs> sorry excuse me is getting out on tv um mm-hmm. on magazines um doing a lot more PR work mm-hmm. because I've done a hell of a lot when it comes to podcasts and actually doing a lot more PR work um mm-hmm. in the U.S. actually because that's where all my clients are for some reason. They're all in the US, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that's my one of my goals for next year and just kind of really getting out there and expanding and scaling a little bit more. Awesome. And last, how do you end the day? How do I end the day? Hmm, I like to watch something on Netflix. So I'll be mm-hmm. in bed. I would just like to just watch something, something silly, something you don't have to even think about, comedy or whatever. Um, and that, that kind of just kind of relaxes me, stops my mind. Because if mm-hmm. your mind keeps going, then you won't be able to relax and get to sleep. Stops exactly. my mind. And then I just end up nodding off. Sometimes the, the phone is on, on the floor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I do to kind of wind myself down. 
Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for um, participating. I love, I just like hearing how it just is interesting to see how people, um, you know, how you think, how you move about the day, what's important right. to you and like, you know, the beginning and how do you end it? Like, I think that's so important in like, especially in an entrepreneur's life, because especially when you have a lot of us are working entrepreneurs. And so you're trying to figure out how to find that balance between your, your full-time job, your passion, and then just, you know, and finding the balance of just having like a life, right? Yes. So, so yeah, so this has been great. Um, thank you. Thank you again. Um, please, one last, one last time, tell it, give everybody your main site to contact you at um, before you go. Okay, so go to makeyourmarkagency.com. That will be the main site. Check it out. Contact me from there. Um, and of course, on any social media platform, um, I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, everywhere. So wherever you, <laughs> where you're at, you'll be able to find me. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Kay. Good luck, my friend. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. This has been awesome. Awesome. Well, stay tuned, everyone. I'll be right back.